I said, you're not going to get out of there without a pool, mate. So I backed my, I backed my car up to nearly the corner. He was up there. <laughs> and I, my, I was only a little Morris. I, it was too big for me to pull, so chappy around the corner. He had a big car, a friend of mine. And he come right, I put my hand up, and I said, well, you'll pull him out. And we got him out, we pulled him out, and I said, now take it, just let it go easy, down round the corner, which he did. Well, he was that blooming pleased, he wanted to pay us, he wanted everything to go, and I said, you'll know what to do next time. Yeah, but oh yeah. That was, you couldn't walk, well, when you're walking up here, you're slipping and sliding everywhere. And uh, even I end up getting an old car, this old 1938 Plymouth. And they just started putting the roads up, past the quarry here in First Avenue. Uh, I just filled the tank up in it and coming home there, I ran out about halfway up 7th Avenue. I wondered why, I just filled the tank. You know, me and Dad was in it and uh, got out and I looked underneath the car and went, geez, tank's missing. <laughs> so I went back down around where uh, Zilbert is now in the, the quarry, then a the, uh, building inside of that. My tank was laying in the middle of the road there. <laughs> Didn't even spill any petrol out of it. So we had to pick it up, me and Dad, and walked, brought it back up to uh, number, it's number seven there now, anyway, as well in 7th Avenue. That's where the car conked out. And uh, it used to be always breaking down on me. You had more wire holding it together than anything else. So, yeah. <laughs> we have a chuckle about that occasionally. And the Springfield people said all along they didn't mind paying a fair amount for the roads because they accepted that the roads was their responsibility. But they complained that the works were excessive and I don't think there's any doubt that they were. Now that wall in Springfield in 2nd um, Avenue, a competent engineer said later that the what they should have done was acquire the blocks on the lower side and turn that into a into a park and you'd only have one level a single level run it wasn't a, it wasn't a glenorchy engineer at the time they, they didn't have any engineers that for a time the council was without engineers so why didn't they do that why did they build a great because they had four hundred thousand pounds no one was supervising it the engineers went to town I had come in, she had that money, exactly for me, 40 years. 40, she was 40 years when she arrived in Tasmania. True. Yes, 40, 40 years. So now she's yeah. 99. Do you remember building your house? I remember that my father was in the house. Oh, no, Of course. She said, I helped too. How? Yuck. 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 Tato. Tato's her father. That's her husband. Ta she, she'll call him Tato like. Everything about this very, very good carpenter. Can I ask about your garden? Vin Kocha Petachove. Nahorod male, shove nahorod male. Who's that? She had everything, no shove. Kajit. Kartopio. Uh, tomato, um, potato. Buraki. Uh, beetroot. Cebulla. Cebulla. Onion, onions. Chutnik. Uh, garlic. Morqua. 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 Yeah, carrots. You know, the night cart. Ah. We from your tire, you put a team, you have made a warning of Hati Male. We from your tire, so you have said, Bulo, so, 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 so,
Para nele eu vou bom. E daí na hora de eu sair. The night night cart, uh, mum tried to save it, save it, and most of it went on to our garden. It was yeah, because that's the best. Yeah, that's what happened with it. And then, yeah, very very little of it was was taken away. I got thrown out before I was elected with another group who went it because we we had the road down here that the council wouldn't take over. Brent Street. Yeah, there's a quarry up behind here and um, there was an explosion. And a pretty powerful explosion. I don't know what the, what the background of it was, but the fire brigade tried to get up and they ended up in, the, in a ditch just before you get to the Springfield School. Well, we'd been arguing with the council that get this road fixed up and they said well you'll have to pay well another chap Alan Burnt and myself did a bit of fishing around and we got wind from an old resident that this section of road had been made he said I worked on it as a 16 year old he said no he said that was made by the public works department so we just got our heads together and we said, right, well, if it was done with the Public Works Department, there must be a record of it somewhere. So we went into the um, archives and we started digging up Public Works Department um, execution acts. And sure enough, there was a sec um, the details of the construction of Hill Street, as it was called then, so we took this into the council, and the council sent an engineer up who confirmed, yes, I'm afraid it is. So we said, right, oh, well, we've got proof that this was a constructed road. And the council started to get, saying, oh, no, well, we don't have to do it. We'll do it when we get around to it sort of thing. So we said, well, this is urgent. Here we've got a case of... Even the, the fire department couldn't get through. What happens? We're, we're not protected. <clears throat> we threw, and then we added that in the, with the problem of, and we got the health inspector up there and showed him where sewerage um, septic tank effluent was running along this same road, and um, he admitted, yes, yes, it's not. That's not good, not good, and it's not shouldn't be happening. So with all these things, we went to the council and we kept getting fobbed off. So on one night, we knew that it was going to come up, the question of Elliot Road. So we all, we had about 20 of us arrived at the council. And uh, one chap got himself to the back of the group and kept heckling. A bit of a stir, eh? <laughs> he kept heckling and they end up, um, Terry Martin left the meeting, he had to go to something else. So Ray Wright was the deputy mayor and he was, and he finally got, got sick of it. He said, clear the gallery. <laughs> they chucked us all out. 57. Most Australians came home to a warm house and a cold beer, maybe even a TV. The basic services of water on tap, the heat that obeys you, streets gutters, a shop, a flush toilet. These things they took for granted. But in Springfield, they had none. Ted Christie lived in Springfield and he started this scrapbook to tell the story of Springfield's long struggle to achieve what most other Australians took for granted. In this interview, Ted tells the story behind the story of his scrapbook. When you look at it, it was a muddy. They're talking Something about it. Horrible, don't you? It made the made the area, you know. Yeah. It uh, was terrible. That isn't a road, dear. That's how it was. That is the truth. People wouldn't deliver the mail. It was too sloppy. You see, you you look at that, and they had a poor bush fights those days, and they they wouldn't do it. So this is where it was nice and wasn't all so much muddy. That's why they put all these, these people put their posts. 
Sixth Avenue and Viewpoint Road here, mm -hmm. they had a bit of gravel on it. And when I used to go out, I had a car and I'd go down that way and, and uh, Fourth Avenue, mm -hmm. that was nothing much, nothing there, and slide down and then come up Sixth Avenue and slide down into here. But I don't know how Marge ever pushed that pram, you know, from down the bottom. No. She, she didn't have a car those days. You know, they wouldn't come up yet. No. So the house was burning, she burnt. And as simple as that, and the, and the water was very poor. You know, and that's it, that speaks for itself. You Never had sewerage though. No, the old pan job she was. Who I had mine right down the back, and Mar <laughs> yeah. Marge was there when she was having the first child and blew over. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a mess, isn't it, really? And that's what they were talking about with the lot on the, on the universe. A festa. Could you Help for Springfield. Yeah. It uh, was terrible. It didn't have a good name. And of course, a lot of them never had homes, especially the imports. Oh, you know, they used to live in huts. all sorts. They live and used to live in car boxes. And, and they used to, they called it wog towns. That's what it was like. Until we got stuck into them about it. They would not have done anything if we hadn't got it started through the council. But we took it further, that just shows the money. And when the people got with us, we formed the Springfield Garden Development League. And that's why we got them in. That'd be the uh, Liberals. Oh. We talked about it, and I got a lot of stuff put in the paper. Well, that and that made know. them, they weren't in power then. And no. that made them Wake look up. at this as a good one to get into the Parliament, you see. Oh, they're all up there saying, oh, terrible shock, and <laughs> they were going to, thought they were going to take over from the government. That was when Rishi, he was in Parliament. You know, he was a Premier. One of the blokes at work. I forget what it was about. No roads, if you read it all. <laughs> well, we needed to be like Noah's Ark. Yeah, well, that, 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 <laughs> that's what it is. That's, isn't that's, it? The, that's the thing of it. But then we got new legislation with a yeah. dove of hope and a little umbrella. <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it? Once it got started, it we grew. played one against the other. I sat in Legislative Council the day they brought the thing in. Reese was very uh, dogmatic about it. Of course, these blokes reckon why we got the loan off the government and the bloke down, oh, I can't think of his name, uh, he wanted to know in the Legislative Council why we were getting it for three point, I just can't think of the right figure. And Rishi said if there's any arguments, we're going to pull it out. And that's how it started. When they got started, all these problems, now if you had a place on the corner, which have had more mm. land, we had to pay the same, everybody paid the same, it didn't matter what you had. And things that went on, they used to, the, the people doing it used to put drives in for people and all that, and still in that money. And everybody was up here that had blocks and all, they still had to pay it. And I know people, they didn't have a drive, but they chucked a bit of stuff down, and of course, if they had to drop it, they had to put the drive in. Well, anyway, see, we had to pay for the roads. I paid half of mine, and over the road, they paid half of it too, and I think it would have been probably about eight or nine hundred dollars or pounds. Yeah. I hate this page. That's the school. That's the school out the back. That's this good. is what the kids used to have to go to school in. But I just love this one, and I think I wonder who did That's that. That's one of the... That'd be Alderman? I'd, no, I reckon the, one of the school kids. It's a pretty big boot, isn't it? Oh, uh, there were some big boys. But that's what they used to have to walk to school in. It's terrible, isn't Eight it, when you think shoes. about it? Well, there's nothing they could do nothing about it. Nothing else to do. <laughs> you know, there's nothing they could do about it. After a while, we weren't happy about the way they based us out, you know, every party playing the same. Oh, that name, that was Ross Addison, wasn't it? Look, he's up to the top of his gumboots in mud as he crosses 8th Avenue with a dog yeah, and scrap. He died in the finish, yeah, yeah. yeah, he died very young. Well, anyway, I'll get back to it. And that had to be paid back to the government. But uh, we stopped the payments. We got together 
and we got round to people and we got money off the people mm. and we said we're not paying any more until it's rectified. Good. And we didn't and we went, we, we fought the council mm. 12 years. Yeah? Fair and we won it. it. Good. Yeah, Good. but we didn't win it because they never took the uh, interest that kept going and they were still in the poo. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All that uh, went for nothing. But it did give us and people a bit of chance to get something together. But it's handy to keep. In 1958, there wouldn't be any more of these around. That tells you, you know, the average people couldn't believe it, that uh, it was like that. Oh, I suppose it's put up with it.